Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Now this is a continuation, um, or this video is a continuation in the series of the Toyota RAV4 engine saga. Um, it's episode, I have no idea, 22, 23, 24, somewhere around about there. It'll tell you in the title. Uh, and this one uh, covers uh, some more measurements on the engine block. And what we need to do is on this one is to check for piston ring end gap. Now essentially, as you know, a piston ring has a gap. It's made of one piece and it has a little gap in the middle. And when this piston ring is in the bore, depending on the bore size, it will affect how much of a gap there is between those two ends of the piston ring. Now obviously I can't quite get it you know, small as it would be in the bore, but it really is tiny and it needs to be small because the bigger that gap the more blow-by we're going to get past the ring you know through that gap and down into the crankcase and that's a bad thing we're losing power the engine is less efficient and of course we'll, you know we don't want combustion gases in the crankcase that's a bad thing so what you need to do is take the rings off the piston and we're going to put them actually in the bore on the engine and then use a feeler gauge to take a measurement to see how much of a gap we've got between those two ends of piston ring. Here we go. So the first job is to whip those piston rings off and this is how I do it. Really, really easy. And um, Keep a note of which was the top ring and which is the second ring. Now you'll notice that the oil scraper rings are already off. Um, that's because we don't use... Uh, the previous check was to check um, the end, the, the side gap on the piston rings. Oh, I've just seen a mouse. Hello, Mr. Mouse. Okay, so we've been measuring um, the side clearance on the previous video. So uh, obviously you don't measure side clearance on the oil ring. Okay, so there we go. Two piston rings. Number one, number two. Yeah, and they are different, so don't mix them up. And you'll notice some lettering. The lettering indicates the up position. So this will be up on the piston as is that one there, look. Okay, and those numbers also denote which is which, uh, if you know what each one means. Okay, to the block. Okay, so we're gonna start with the top ring, ring number one, and it needs to be positioned in the bore where there's the minimum amount of wear. Now, obviously, we took some readings on a previous video. We took three readings on this plane and three readings uh, along the block. So we need a combination of the two smallest measurements. So looking at what we got, we took three positions, mid, uh, top, middle and lower, and the lower and the mid were both the same. 86.04 in that plane and 86 in that plane. So we're going to position the ring in the middle of the bore as regards uh, the, the, horizontal, uh, the vertical. So we'll pop that in there and in order to ensure that the ring is correctly positioned, we can use the piston to push the ring down. And that just helps to keep it square in the bore, otherwise the reading's gonna be way out. Okay, yep, that's about midway down the bore. Excellent. Right, you need to see what I can see. Okay, now the biggest problem here is going to be focus, because at the moment we're focused on the on the boy on the top of the block here. Look, I want to focus down there. There we go. Right. So, trying not to destroy the focus. Let's just turn that off. Right. Now that we're focused, that should keep focus. Now down here, uh, you can see that the piston ring is now in the bore and it's um, you know, perpendicular to the bore wall and you can see we've got a tiny gap and it's that tiny gap there that we need to measure. Now what's going to change that gap is as the cylinder wall, the wall um, wears of course that piston ring is going to spring further out, its diameter is going to increase and of course that gap will increase. Now also in addition to that the piston ring itself, the contact surface of the ring against the bore, that too is going to wear and that will, of course, increase that gap too. Now, specifications for this. Let's have a look here, look. 
they're all over the place. So, rings, 1997 vehicle, end gap for ring number one. Uh, standard is 0.27 to 0.5 millimeters. Uh, the wear limit. That's odd. Oh, sorry. Yes, the wear limit is 1.1 millimeters. That's quite a lot. So it's definitely smaller than that. Okay, so let's measure it. So I would say let's start off with a 0.5 millimeter feeler gauge. Okay, so point. Five zero eight is what we've got. Let's see if that fits in the gap. No, so it's smaller than that. That's good. Okay, so let's just find the next one down from that. Okay, it's point four eight three millimeters. Let's try that one. Nope, still too big. Right, moving on. Next one. So point four five seven was the previous one. Point four three two. Now that's about in the middle of the original um, limits. There we go, look. Yes, excellent. Okay, so that fits all the way through, all the way to the cylinder wall. And that reading is 0 0.432 millimeters. Right, now it's time to do, that's a pass by the way, uh, it's time to do the second ring. Now we're gonna position the ring in the same place on the bore as the top ring and we need to grab the piston to do that right we're just going to push that piston back there the the piston ring down the bore using its piston until it's about halfway down there we go and that's the position of minimum uh, the least amount of wear on that bore cool okay so this is piston ring number two off the first piston and again, we need to measure that gap. Now, we, we'll start from where we left off. So we were at 0 0.432 mil feeler gauge. And we'll just see if that fits in that gap too. No, that's too tight. Okay, we'll go one down. Okay, so 0 0.406 millimeters. Oh, sorry, camera. Yeah, look at that. It's a good snug fit, is that? Yeah, perfect. Okay, so there you go. Great job. So ring number two has got uh, an end gap of 0 0.406 millimeters. Super. So there you go, a really short video on how to do or how to measure piston ring end gap. Look at that. Cool camera work. Not really. All new to this kind of thing. Um, ring gap, piston ring end gap, piston ring gap, piston ring end gap is really important and you do need to measure it. Now this engine will be getting new piston rings regardless. Uh, mainly because the oil scraper rings are knackered. That's why it was burning so much oil. And a combination of um, absolutely destroyed, hardened um, exhaust valve stem seals as well. They were completely shot. So that this engine had no hope it was going to burn tons of oil. Oh, and it had some oil leaks as well. The main crankshaft rear oil seal had failed. So there was oil all over the place. It wasn't looking good. Okay. Um... What was I going to say? Yes, positioning of the piston ring in the bore is critical. It needs to be positioned uh, in the bore 
uh, in the position of the bore where there is absolute minimum wear or the least amount of wear. So you can't do this in uh, this measurement until you've measured the bore. So there is a specific order that you do this in and, and that's the order that I'm doing the videos in for you. Okay, well, if you have any questions or comments, then please do leave them down the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to subscribe, please do. More the merrier. It'd be great to have you on board. Click the subscribe button, but also click the little gear next to it and turn on notifications. And that way you'll get an email sent through uh, by YouTube as and when any new videos go up on the channel. And there's usually five every week, most weeks. Sometimes there's more. Uh, this week there'll be 10, maybe 15 videos. Okay, well, my name's Andy Young, and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, and you've been watching my Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Over and out.